Yo, what's going on, guys? Crispy Flakes here. If you are watching this video right now, that means your boy Crispy Flakes is on vacation in Costa Rica. So before we get going on today's video, if you guys can please do me a huge favor, guys, and leave a like on it. I know I will enjoy my vacation much, much more. Um, I know you guys, you know, are supporting the videos and everything like that. So please leave a like. It would be greatly greatly appreciate and for today's video guys is the beginning of a series i will be doing this week where i am going to be replacing every position on every nba team with their draft day comparison so for today's video guys we are going to be replacing every starting point guard in the nba with their draft day comparison and actually to take it to like another level uh we are going to be starting that player at that position so just to give you guys a quick example right here ben simmons is the starting point guard for the 76ers we all know that his draft day comparison according to i think it was like draftexpress.com or something like that is uh, lamar odom so we got lamar odom replacing ben simmons here and yeah it's gonna be absolutely awesome guys i've been wanting to do this series uh, for so long now so it should be a lot of fun just seeing it kind of like you know clowning on the uh, draft day experts who compared these players to certain guys and then they end up being nothing like them although lamar odom's really not a bad comparison for ben simmons so i ain't too mad about that one guys uh, but yeah, man, so we are going to go through all the rosters here. I'm going to tell you guys the comparisons that we did. Uh, first, huge sell to Lil Saint BB21. He helped me make all these rosters. Absolutely awesome guy. Helps me with so much of this stuff here, man. Uh, so big props out to you, man. Thank you so much for that. So yeah, let's go ahead and get going on this. So we got for the point guard spot, it's Lamar Odom replacing Ben Simmons. Um, for the Milwaukee Bucks, we do got Keon Dooling was actually the player comparison for Eric Bledsoe. Keon Dooling was actually a pretty solid point guard. He was a, he was a good scorer, man. Like, never the best in the NBA. I think he had some injury issues. Uh, but yeah, so Keon Dooling, he was definitely... I just remember watching him. I think it was on the Nets, New Jersey Nets, uh, quite some time ago. So... Yeah, also keep in mind that as we go through this, uh, these guys are all going to be assuming to, assume that they are in their prime, just because it's more fun that way. Uh, for the Chicago Bulls, so there's this Tomas Anoransky at the making of this video. His is Zoran Planasic. This guy played like in the 80s, and the only reason he was compared to him is because he's a 6'7 point guard. That's the only reason, man. So, yeah, that was him. He's going to be starting for this video. But, yeah, pretty much just a, a, a Tomas Anoransky, right? Uh, for the Cleveland Cavaliers, we got Mo Williams was actually the uh, draft day comparison for Darius Garland. We all know that Mo Williams once did play for Cleveland. So, yeah, if Darius can end up being that, that would be fantastic. Uh, I really liked him alongside LeBron James. So, that was always a lot of fun to watch. For the Boston Celtics, we got Bobby Jackson, guys. Imagine comparing... Kemba Walker to Bobby Jackson. I remember Bobby. I think he played for the Houston Rockets for quite a few seasons. Um, okay, yeah. Look, so this is like, because this is him in his prime deck. So I think he played a few seasons after this. But yeah, Kemba Walker, definitely way better. The field goal percentage of this dude, absolutely atrocious. He had some good, he had some decent seasons though. Like, I do like Bobby Jackson. I remember he was a killer in 2K, man. Okay, for the Los Angeles Clippers, we got Eric Snow being the comparison of Patrick Beverly. Uh, Eric Snow was definitely a scrap around the court. I do think Patrick Beverly is a bit of a better offensive player. Not by, like, a lot, but, you know, Eric Bledsoe was not very exactly, like, killing the score sheet. And, you know, this season he shot damn 11%. I do think he played with Allen Iverson for a few seasons, though. Uh, before the... Oh, my bad. We had a... Yeah, for the Memphis Grizzlies, John Rant's player comparison is De'Aaron Fox. So, he is going to be on the team over here. Of course, De'Aaron Fox on the Kings is going to be somebody else. So, yeah, De'Aaron Fox will be... Uh, for John Rant, although it looking like John Rant might end up being the better player. I still think De'Aaron Fox has a lot to prove, though, himself, though. For the Atlanta Hawks, Steph Curry, of course, being the player comparison for Trey Young. I see so much in it. Uh, actually, when I look at Trey Young, I see I see uh, Steph Curry, but I also do see a bit of Steve Nash. I think, uh, you know, I don't know if Trey Young's quite the passer Steve Nash is, at least yet in his career. But no, I definitely totally get the... the uh, it's the uh, Steph Curry comparison for the Miami Heat. Kendrick Nunn's comparison is Corey Joseph, which you know, Corey Joseph is fine. That's all I really got to say about him. Kendrick Nunn kind of came out of nowhere uh, this season for the Miami Heat and just started dominating. So that's great for the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, Trey Burke was the player comparison for Terry Rozier. So. Um, yeah, Trey Burke, once again, a fine player. He's had some decent seasons, never been anything crazy. Rozier's actually, last I checked, having a pretty damn decent season. For the Utah Jazz, it's going to be Mike Conley. His being uh, compared to TJ Ford. TJ Ford, 
uh, played a few seasons with the Milwaukee Bucks, I believe also the Indiana Pacers, I could be wrong about that, but that sounds about right, another guy that had a, such a promising career, but that kind of ended with uh, bad injuries and stuff, yeah, TJ Ford, if you know, you know, this guy was definitely a beast, for the Sacramento Kings, we got De'Aaron Fox, comparison was John Wall, so John Wall going in his prime on the Sacramento Kings, uh, one of the quickest players with the basketball, went healthy, just like De'Aaron Fox, man, one of the quickest players with the basketball, for the New York Knicks, um, Guy looks well. Okay, it was Frank Nilakina. I did not know he was starting, but according to my sheet, he is. Uh, I think we actually did like the best point guard on this. I don't know, man. But yeah, anyway, it is Dante Exum is Frank Nilakina. I can see it, like just from like a player height. Like they're both tall point guards and stuff, and they're both you know good enough on defense. Uh, for the Los Angeles Lakers, uh, we do have LeBron James technically listed at the point guard for this, and his uh, player comparison is Magic Johnson. It is so funny how, like, everybody always compares, like, Michael Jordan and um, LeBron James to each other. But, yeah, LeBron is so much more Magic than he is Michael Jordan. It's not even funny, man. So, uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic player comparison. That one is spot on, if you ask me. For the Orlando Magic, this one is low-key funny. I mean, it's James Harden, and that is replacing Markel Fultz. Now, Markel Fultz was, of course... Uh, I believe the first pick in the draft, and yes, he's had like injury issues, but the funny thing about it is that Marco Fultz's like jump shot is just so wonky these days that it's like, damn, James Harden is one of the best offensive players to ever play the game of basketball. So, I mean, uh, it is kind of funny, but at the same time, Marco Fultz still has, you know, so many years left ahead of him. I would actually say Markel is more like Westbrook than he is James Harden. That's just my opinion, but yeah, this was the draft day comparison. For the Dallas Mavericks, uh, Luka Doncic is player comparison is Hito Turkoglu. Hito Turkoglu had a lot of good seasons on the Orlando Magic, was always just a good all-around player. Obviously, not to the extent that Luka is, uh, but yeah, uh, Hito was an all-star, I believe, and uh, he was on that, well, I don't think, yeah, it was not the championship Magic. He was on the team that went to the finals with Dwight Howard. For the Brooklyn Nets, uh, we got Chris Paul, that his comparison, of course, being Kyrie Irving. Uh, I don't really see, you know, Chris Paul, to me, is just more like general leadership, like get the best pass and get the pass, uh, best like player like in the best position to succeed where Kyrie is more like offensive oriented so yeah that comparison don't don't really see it man but then again you know some of them crossover moves that prime cp3 had you know I do see that aspect in Kyrie's game for the uh, Denver Nuggets uh Ben Gordon is the comparison to Jamal Murray I actually low-key can see that Ben Gordon of course had some really good seasons on the Chicago Bulls then went to the Detroit Pistons and completely fell off but yeah um Ben was technically actually a shooting guard, but Jamal Murray, I think, could also find success at the shooting guard spot if he did play that. Just kind of like one of those combo scoring type of guards. For the Indiana Pacers, uh, we got Keith Bogans. That should be, I believe, for Malcolm Brogdon. Yes, it is. Uh, that's just completely off. Okay, yeah, Keith Bogans was like a 3 and D type of guy uh, for like the Orlando Magic and a few other teams throughout his NBA career. For the Pelicans, Jason Kidd. I absolutely love this comparison for Lonzo Ball. Like Jason Kidd. Just a guy that never tore up the score sheet, but still put up numbers, grabbed the rebounds, grabbed the assists. I love the comparison for Lonzo on this one, man. Of course, was always a really good defender. I always saw Lonzo as like a J-Kid or a Rajon Rondo type of guy. For the Detroit Pistons, Derrick Rose technically the starting point guard. His comparison was Dwayne Wade. So, yes, it's not 2003, but finally the Pistons do get a prime Dwayne Wade on their basketball team. Of course, they elected to choose Darko. So, yeah, D-Wade uh, actually started his rookie season as a point guard. I think he played point guard for Marquette also. So, that's kind of fun. That'll be kind of fun to watch as this goes along here. For the Toronto Raptors, we have uh, Tim Hardaway was the player comparison for Kyle Lowry. I don't really see that. Kyle Lowry, to me, is more like a Chauncey Billups type of player than he has Tim Hardaway. Um, but, yeah, interesting comparison. For the Houston Rockets, we do have Russell Westbrook's player comparison was Rajon Rondo. I actually see that quite a bit just with the triple-double tendencies. You know, a guy that can shoot the three but is not the greatest at it. Uh, definitely a realistic comparison if you ask me, you know, all these years later. Of course, Rondo did not have the explosiveness of Russell Westbrook. So, you might actually say Russell is more like a Penny Hardaway type of guy. Maybe not as good offensively, though, you know, from the perimeter. For the San Antonio Spurs, we got Sean Livingston being the player comparison for DeJounte Murray. Uh, okay, I guess I can kind of see that. Um, Sean Livingston's a good enough defender, and that's kind of what DeJounte Murray prides himself on. For the Phoenix Suns, we do have Ricky Rubio. His player comparison was Steve Nash. Man, I remember Ricky Rubio when he was playing on, uh, what was it, uh, on like Real Madrid or something like that. 
I just remember like this dude, like he was basically like what Luca is now. Just everybody looked at this kid and was like, wow, he is going to be the real deal with court vision, which he still does have great court vision. Uh, but yeah, he definitely not a Steve Nash type of guy at this point in his NBA career. I don't know if his injuries or something that kind of derailed Ricky Rubio. Still a fine point guard, just not Steve Nash. Not a lot of people are though. For the Oklahoma City Thunder, guys, we got Chris Paul's comparison was Isaiah Thomas. Uh, I actually think that's pretty damn spot on. Uh, just a really scrappy point guard that's going to do whatever it takes for his team to win a basketball game. Isaiah did that for Detroit, and Chris Paul has done that for essentially anywhere he's gone uh, throughout his career. For the Minnesota Timberwolves, we got Penny Hardaway's comparison. Uh, that is for D'Angelo Russell. Okay. I never really thought about that. I, I don't really know if I see a lot of D'Lo and Penny. You guys let me know in the comment section below. Do you like this comparison, or do you think it's just kind of way off? Um, for the uh, Portland uh, Trailblazers, wow. Davey Lillard got it. <laughs> To Jay Williams, 78 overall. Okay, that one is definitely way off, man, because uh, Damian Lillard, I don't remember when Damian was selected, what pick he was in the draft, but uh, yeah, Jay Williams, 78 overall. Um, I, okay, Jay Williams, though, he's the guy, I think he played for the Bulls and the guy that had like the serious, serious, he got like a serious accident. So I guess technically, you know, Jay Williams never did reach his prime because of injuries, then you can't really hate on him too much for it. But yeah, uh, for the Golden State Warriors, uh, Abdul, my, Mamad Abdul Ralph. He played for the Denver Nuggets, I believe. And there's actually some really good videos talking about. I think uh, Jimmy Highroller made a video talking about how he was Steph Curry and played like Steph Curry before Steph Curry was a thing. Yeah, he definitely was. This guy was way, way, way ahead of his time, like in the 80s. Uh, that is a spot on comparison. For the Washington Wizards, we got John Wall's comparison is Russell Westbrook. Okay, fair enough. I mean,. I see it and I don't. John Ball's definitely got crazy athleticism like that. But yeah, so that's all the point guard comparisons. All these guys have been inserted into the starting lineup. As far as the team I want to follow, I'm looking at my list right here, guys. And uh, damn, so many great ones to look at. I think I'm going to go with, let's go with the Lakers. I want to see how Magic Johnson does as the starting point guard. Well, I guess he is the point guard. I guess LeBron James is not technically a point guard, but plays point guard. I want to see how the Lakers do with Magic Johnson. So, yeah. Let's go ahead, guys. Simulate this NBA season and see how this team does. And like I said, before we do that, if you guys don't mind dropping a like on this video, you guys will increase just my positivity throughout my vacation by 2 trillion percent. All right, let's get him in. Okay, so Magic Johnson on the Lakers went about as well as expected. 67 and 14 for them. One more game against uh, Steve Nash and the Phoenix. Hey, you know what actually works out though in the end, right, man? Steve Nash and the Phoenix Suns. Okay, that actually feels right then. Uh, we got Magic Johnson MVP at 25 points, 10 rebounds, 13 assists per game, 42% from three. Zion, rookie of the year. Nurkic, six man, Kawhi Leonard, defensive player. Bam, out of bio, most improved. And Frank Vogel, coach of the year. So, on NBA first, we got Magic on the Lakers, Curry on the Hawks. Uh, on NBA second, we got CP3 on the Nets, Penny Hardaway on the T-Wolves, and then we got Jason Kidd on the Pelicans, and James Harden on the Houston Rockets. Um, and then we got D-Wade, Jimmy Butler making that. Okay, okay, very nice, very nice. Uh, so this is what the playoffs look like. We got Lakers, Utah, OKC, Dallas, Minnesota, Phoenix, Clippers, Denver. Yo, how does D-Wade not lead my Pistons to the damn uh, playoffs? Uh, Philly, Brooklyn, Atlanta, Cleveland, Miami, Indiana, and then Toronto and Boston. I do want to go over to the uh, standings just so you can see how your favorite team did overall. See who, you know, didn't make it and stuff. So, looking like the Sacramento Kings with John Wall instead of De'Aaron Fox. It didn't do all that great. And then Jay Williams replacing Damon Lillard. Not great success over there for Portland. Uh, meanwhile, here is the uh, Eastern Conference. Yo, my Pistons 28-54. and 54. Damn, bro. And we even still got Blake Griffin because we're playing without injuries. It seems like Zoran <laughs> didn't exactly lead the Chicago Bulls to great success. That's all good, man. It's all good. Okay, you all got the next video. Uh, you know, I'm sure Zach Levine's got some crazy player comparison. All right, player stats. I am going to kind of scroll through this so you can see how the point guards all did on your team and stuff. If you want to pause the video, feel free to do so. I'll try to show every single point guard, though. Oh, uh, yeah, Keith Bogans, damn, bro. <laughs> he played like the damn third best point guard. He was the damn starter. D-Way, 25 and 8. That's some BS, man. He'd be playing better than that. Guaranteed. Guaranteed, man. That's a guaranteed. Uh, Sean Livingston, 8 points. Okay, fair enough for him. Uh, Steve Nash, 6, 15 assists. Damn, man. Y'all see that? Isaiah Thomas, Penny Hardaway. Okay, okay. Uh, Jay Williams, there he is. Russell Westbrook. Yeah, I guess, no, Russell Westbrook yeah, was the placement of the Washington Wizards. Okay. Uh, Lamar Odom at 16, 9, and 7. I still think that's a great comparison. We got Keon Dooling at 10 and 5. I actually think he did play for the Milwaukee Bucks for a little bit, too. How'd our boy Zoran do? 
Zoran, nine points. Damn, he didn't play too bad, man. He pretty much like a great value Tomas Sonoransky at that point. So, uh, yeah. Okay, Bobby Jackson, 11 points for him. Clippers with, uh, damn, Eric Snow. He got eight assists. Did not really focus on scoring, so I guess that's pretty true to how he really plays. Steph Curry, 32 and 11 on the Hawks. Miami Heat, y'all got, uh, where's he at, where's he at? Corey Joseph. Uh, we got the Hornets over here with Trey Burke at 12.6 assists. Utah Jazz, TJ Ford. Uh, we got the Kings. Did I pass the Lakers again already? I don't think I did. Dante Exum at 12. Okay, there we go. We're back to the Los Angeles Lakers. Okay. Um, yeah, plain and simple, I think the Lakers are going to win this. Like, you know, you replace LeBron with Magic. You're still freaking golden, man. You're still absolutely golden. Who knows? Maybe one of these teams can knock them out. Maybe uh, Mo Williams on the Cleveland Cavaliers goes off or something like that. Not really sure, but so far the Lakers, they swept theirs four games to zero. Hito Turkoglu and the Dallas Mavericks got them next. Uh, Lamar Odom and Philly killing it. Actually, Lamar Odom would not be a bad replacement because he's actually a little bit of a better three. Well, I mean, he's a way better three-point shooter because if you can shoot it through, you're way better three-point shooter than Ben Simmons is. Um, but he's not, he's not like absolutely dominant at it. So, all right, we got Magic, Eric Snow. Uh, I believe was that Penny Hardaway was the comparison for Kyle Lowry. No, it was, yeah, Tim Hardaway, and then we got Lamar Odom. Okay, simulate rounds. Here we go, man. So, we got ben, uh, ben, Lamar Odom out of it, Eric Snow out of it. So, we got Tim Hardaway against Magic Johnson. I think I know who's going to win this. Just a prediction here, man. And the winner is the Los Angeles Lakers, four games to two. Magic Johnson, 20 points, nine rebounds, 15 freaking assists out there, guys. Killing it. Anyway, though, damn, man, look at this closeout game, 20 assists. Wow, okay. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video, guys. Like I said, man, if y'all don't mind dropping a like on it, it'll make me enjoy my vacation way, way more. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. We got the shooting guards one coming out the next day. Uh, peace out, my friends.